Good evening. I'm Amanda Donnan, Chief Curator at the Fry Art Museum. Welcome to the Fry's virtual exhibition opening for Anastasia Renee, Don't Be Absurd, Alice in Parts. We would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Coast Salish peoples, specifically the Duwamish and Suquamish tribes, who have since time immemorial stewarded the lands and waters of this place we now call Seattle. Please join me in offering gratitude and respect to their elders past and present, as well as to future generations for their continued stewardship. Thank you for choosing to spend this evening with us as we celebrate the opening of poet and multi-genre artist Anastasia Renee's exhibition through a special presentation of installation images, video, performance, and conversation. We'll be joined by the artist, by David Strand, the Fry's associate curator and the organizer of this exhibition, Joseph Rosa, the museum's director and CEO, Danny Tyrell, programming curator at CB Forum, and seven talented artists who will perform a choreo poem written by Anastasia and featuring passages from Audre Lorde's 1979, Need, a chorale for Black Women Voices. Tonight's program is being recorded and will be available in the coming weeks on the Fry Art Museum's YouTube channel and on our blog for those who couldn't make it tonight. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, please remember to like our page or subscribe to our YouTube channel and feel free to let us know your comments or questions in the chat. Thank you again for being with us this evening. I'd now like to introduce the Fry Art Museum's director and CEO, Joseph Rosa. Thank you, Amanda. I'm happy to welcome you to our program. We're delighted that we're able to share tonight's program far beyond the museum's walls. Tonight's exhibition reflects some of the most important work we do at the Fry. Our mission is to present extraordinary artists exploring the issues of our time and to engage our community in a dialogue. We're honored to present Anastasia Renee's compelling work tonight and grateful that you are part of the conversation. Exhibitions like tonight's require coordination and collaboration among artists in the gallery and behind the scenes. I'd like to thank our partners and funders, CD Forum and programming curator, Danny Terrell, are co-presenting with us this evening. We're delighted for this partnership. Exhibition support comes from the Rainier Institute and Foundation through the Fry Art Museum Artist Trust Consortium. We'd also like to thank Arts Fund, the Fry Foundation, and the generous Fry members and donors. Thank you also to The Stranger for their media sponsorship. And now I'm pleased to introduce David Strand, Associate Curator at the Fry, to tell us more about Anastasia Renee and this exhibition. Thanks, Joe, and good evening, everyone. It has been an incredible honor to organize Anastasia's show here at the museum. While I wish more than anything that we could be gathered in the galleries together tonight, I'm grateful that we can still present this very important body of work in a special performance through digital means. This new decade we find ourselves in and the onset of the coronavirus pandemic has produced immense hardship, exacerbating the rampant and frankly absurd inequities that have long plagued America across lines of race, class, gender, and ability. While this exhibition was conceived prior to 2020, Anastasia came to the Fry for her first meeting with us back in early 2019 with a fully fleshed out vision for the entire show. And now the events of the past year and recent weeks, especially the Black Lives Matter movement and the insurrection at the Capitol by white supremacists only reinforces why this exhibition needs to be mounted and given our utmost attention, even if the museum's doors can't reopen just yet. In Don't Be Absurd, Alice in Parts, Anastasia brings us into the home, head, and heart of her character, Alice Metropolis, a queer Black woman who lives in the last house on a block that is rapidly being gentrified. Alice, like so many of us, deals with the many threats that surround them by just trying to keep it moving. The exhibition shows us the heavy toll these threats, such as breast cancer, affordable housing, police brutality, and failed relationships take on their body and spirit. The exhibition expands our understanding of gentrification from not only encompassing the literal threat of being displaced from one's own home, but to cancer cells gentrifying the body and white supremacy gentrifying the mind. 
Amidst these interlocking forms of oppression, Alice seeks solace in the Lord, as in Audre Lorde, the black lesbian feminist, writer, mother, warrior, poet, and activist, who if you haven't read at this point, I highly recommend doing so. In one of the poems in the exhibition, Alice prays to be reborn with a GPS with the voice of the Lord that will guide them through life free of fear. In this present moment, we all need an Audre Lorde GPS to help steer us through the radical change necessary to reach collective liberation before it's too late. Anastasia's work carries Audre Lorde's legacy of transforming silence into language and action forward. And she plunges us into Alice's world through an immersive installation at the Fry that includes a broad range of media, including poetry, videos, photographs, sound, and objects. Before I invite Anastasia to say a few words, I want to briefly thank some of the folks who have helped make this exhibition and tonight's program possible. First, I would like to express my deep thanks to each and every member of the Fry staff for their steadfast dedication and flexibility as we've navigated new virtual waters. Next, I want to extend my gratitude to the wondrous Danny Terrell and all the amazing folks over at CD Forum for co-presenting this event and for all the critical work they do in empowering Black artists and building community within and beyond Seattle. I would also like to thank Alicia Johnson of Winawari, who will be doing an artist talk with Anastasia later in March. I would like to thank the folks at Jack Straw Cultural Center, as well as Molly Mack, Justine Hazley Martin, and especially the incredible Michael B. Main for their technical artistry and support in helping create various aspects of the installation. Anastasia was the final recipient of the 2018 James W. Ray Distinguished Artist Award, which is an award funded by the Rainier Institute and Foundation and administered by Artist Trust, which then results in a presentation at the Fry Art Museum. So my thanks extend to Artist Trust as well. And finally, I want to express my deepest thanks to Anastasia. It has been such an immense honor and privilege to be able to support your vision as an artist and writer over the last two years. The wisdom, care, and heart you have infused into every step of this process has been unrivaled. Thank you for making this journey one that has been full of joy and laughter, despite the many trials and tribulations that were thrown your way. You are a superstar. And now I will turn it over to Anastasia to say a few words about the exhibition and Alice. Thank you, David. We cannot allow our fear of anger to deflect us nor seduce us for settling for anything less than the hard work of excavating honesty, Audre Lorde. The truth is the phrases thank you with much appreciation and with gratitude feel like containers too small to fully express the sea of emotions I feel in my heart for the two year process, uncertain and ongoing progress and the joyful completion of this work. And for that reason, I fear sharing remarks with all of you. I want to begin by thanking a higher source and my ancestors by blood, mission, and vision. Without their sacrifices, wisdom, inspiration, literary, and artistic gifts, I know my work would not live in the world. Next, I want to thank my family and friends for supporting my goals and dreams as it relates to the many layers and iterations of the planning and execution of Don't Be Absurd, Alice in Parts. There were multiple times along the way when I paused and asked myself and others and Alice's character, is this too absurd? Is this just too much? Will anyone even understand this show? And then later in 2020, when it was supposed to debut, the bigger question was, will anyone even see this show? And the Most High, the universe, the ancestors, elders, family, friends, and the Fry all unanimously said, it's going to happen. And so shall it be, and so it is. You, dear museum goer, are invited to step inside the world of Alice Metropolis. You are invited to witness her bright light, her intense wit, her unfiltered truth, unshakable drive to wanna be alive, 
her symptomatic anger in response to systemic inequities and injustices and her unwavering and fierce, fierce love. I am grateful for the Alice Metropolis character, which visited me via a free write years ago. And I decided she'd make several appearances and she did too, clearly, in my early work and after that. She then made an appearance in my one person show, Nine Ounces. It was after writing an entire book of Alice poems while simultaneously waging personal and political war on the side effects of systemic racism, longstanding gentrification of the black body and neighborhoods in my own life that I knew without question my art needed to express, uncover, and lean into and expose these themes. I'm grateful that Alice Metropolis is a character and not my alter ego. If Alice Metropolis were my alter ego, she would most certainly remind you to worship the Lord, Audrey, at every opportunity. That being said, I want to thank writer, activist, feminist, mother, and Black lesbian Audrey Lord for without her rich wealth of knowledge, poetry, essays, and spirit, much of this exhibition would not exist. I am deeply grateful for the poets, writers, creative geniuses, and overall magical humans, Stormy Weber, Reagan Jackson, Amani Sims, Jessica Rochelle, Labrette Baker, Kamari Bright, and Randy Ford, who brought the Don't Be Absurd Alice in Park choreo poem, inspired by Audre Lorde's chorale poem, Need to Life. Though this is only but a piece of my attitude of gratitude, I want to end by reiterating gratitude to every person and institution that David mentioned and heartfelt appreciation and gratitude to David Strand, exceptional curator, dependable on task Virgo, text gift giver, and full-time ally. Thank you all. Thank you so much for those words, Anastasia. Now that you've all gotten to hear a little bit more about Alice, we would like to take you into her home through a short film that will take you inside and around the exhibition at the museum. Overlaid on this footage, you will hear the racing thoughts that keep Alice up at night. Let's take a look. Stick to the plan, stick to the plan, stick to the plan, Alice. Stick to the plan, stick to the plan. Sleep, 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 sleep. I gotta go to sleep. I gotta go to sleep. I need to go to sleep. Almond milk, butter, eggs, bacon, yogurt. Oh my God, I really need to make more smoothies. I need more smoothie in my life. Kale, sleep, 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 sleep. Stick to the plan, Alice. Stick to the plan. What was that? What was that sound? Was that a gunshot? cannot be a gunshot but was it was it though was it a gunshot of course it could be a gunshot what if i die from a gunshot what if the police just bust down the door and shoot me for no fucking reason like pow like boom like splatter stick to the plan alice i gotta go to sleep butter um eggs yogurt i really need to have more smoothies in my life and then and then what if the police say something like they've been following me or i look suspicious did you know that there are so many words for suspicious doubtful unsure dubious shady wary oh i gotta go to sleep i need to go to sleep stick to the plan stick to the plan alice stick to the plan but then maybe if the police come in They'd stop and they'd say something like, oh, we are so sorry. We have the fucking wrong apartment all together. We were actually looking for a different nigger. <sighs> okay, 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 okay. I got to go to sleep. I got to go to sleep. This stupid insomnia. I really need more smoothies in my life. Kale. Kale is like the best ingredient. I love kale. Yogurt. Olive oil. Yes. I need some more olive oil. Paper towels. Ice cream. Ah, uh, breathe in, breathe out. That's what my therapist says. Therapist is like, just rest and think good thoughts. Um, um, oh, 
Oh, all my friends, my good friends say to me, namaste, namaste. And I feel that way. I think I think there is a God in me, but I just want to say, nah, I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay right here in my apartment because I'm scared as fuck. Somebody's going to kill me. Stick to the plan, Alice. Just stick to the plan. <laughs> stick to the plan. I'm going to stay here and I'm going to sleep. It's going to feel so good. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and feel so rested. I don't want to stay awake. I don't want to stay awake. What was that sound? Oh, my God. Is is that a gunshot? It can't be a gunshot. It could be a gunshot. Is somebody uh somebody is definitely putting finishing touches on the market next to me. My whole neighborhood is now in preparation for a market. There's no more neighbors. I never signed up to live next to a fucking market. Used to be my neighbor. Won't you be my neighbor? Oh my god, I really miss Mr. Rogers. He was so cool. I wish he was my dad. I wish I was a good neighbor. Why can't I stop chewing my nails? Why do people chew their nails? Am I a cannibal? Am I a fucking cannibal? Would a cannibal wake up and just like all of a sudden be a vegetarian? Could this happen? Maybe I should get up and do laundry. There's so much dirty laundry. What was that? Was that a gunshot? What was that sound? It can't be a gunshot. It could be. It could be a gunshot. It could happen to me. Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? Thank you to Michael B. Main for creating that short video tour for us. To help immerse you even further into Alice's realm, we will now play a short clip from the central video work of the exhibition, also titled Alice in Parts. And now we will turn from the exhibition proper to the choreo poem performance that has been prepared specially for tonight. It is my pleasure to introduce Danny Terrell from CD Forum, who will in turn introduce the performance and all the incredible performers involved. Hello, I'm Danny Terrell, the curator for Central District Forum for Arts and Ideas. We are excited to partner with the Fry Art Museum in presenting the opening night celebration of Anastasia Renee's Don't Be Absurd, Alice in Parts. Central District Forum for Arts and Ideas is a nonprofit organization solely dedicated to presenting emerging Black arts, artists, and ideas in the Seattle area. We believe in the value of community, creativity, identity, and passion. These values serve as our strategic frame 
and they guide our day-to-day operations and program decisions. I'm excited to not only work with Anastasia Renee, who I consider family, I also am excited to be in the same space with many of the artists tonight that we at CD Forum have been honored to work with. Our work at Central District Forum for Arts and Ideas centers Black voices and all, all of our experiences. These voices are challenging us to be a better organization and people. As we challenge ourselves to understand that Blackness is not and does not look like one thing, we also want to challenge our audiences as well. Anastasia Renee's work will not only challenge you, it will move you to be a better version of yourself. Anastasia pours a lot of themselves into their work. And the parts that they leave out, you'll actually find if you know where to look. Tonight, you'll experience Anastasia's work and artists that are mountains who refuse to be moved and they exude love that is unmeasurable. I'm excited to be with you in this space. Let's put our hands together for LaBrette Baker, Amani Sims, Randy Ford, Stormy Weber, Reagan Jackson, Kamari Bright, and Jessica Rochelle. And let's give a big round of applause to Anastasia Renee as we present the choir poem, Don't Be Absurd, Allison Parks. Dearest Lord, it's occurred to me we are missing a few things mainly ourselves. 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 So, Lord, as it was on this day of our Lord and Savior, Audrey, I set out to make a list of 10 commandments from her mouth. Her mouth, a big dipper against a budding nebula. A herd of galaxies, an unfathomable string of light years, bright like a breast in an infant's blackness. And I begged her for the wisdom, and I begged her for just a small moment, free from gravity. And she told me. I already know the silence won't protect me, but I must also remember that fear will throw me under the bus. And love, all kinds, not returned, only prepares me for space. The Lord's Ten Commandments 1 to 3. Visualize daily winning the battles going on inside your body. Revolution is one form of social change. Theorizing about self-worth is ineffective. Alice. When Alice hears them say, the moon is shrinking, she thinks of Black women's bodies being gentrified, of craters stuck between her teeth and white men trying to colonize her. How... Can, can I build, build a nation? Build a nation. Wow. Can I build a nation? Build a nation. Afraid, afraid, afraid to walk, to walk, walk away. Away. into the moonlight. Into the moonlight. Alice's sadness is as flower as mortuary, and she cannot put her finger on where exactly she is decomposing. Is she rotting? Is she molting? Or which way is up? Alice is singing inside her rib cage. Rattle, rattle, rattle. Alice has decided to come clean and snow angel herself on the ground where she squirms her full self into the snow. She is not obsessed with being too small or too large. She is not hair pulling or nail biting about not being good enough. In this moment, she is driven white and seen. Alice has decided she's going to only eat Ritz crackers because invisible butter on her tongue is the thing she can feel because Ritz crackers are a distraction from the birds flying around in her kitchen, from the blue jay pecking at her intuition's ear, from insomnia holding her at gunpoint, from caution tape sticking to her throat, from the footage of... Footage of... From footage of... From footage of... From footage of... 
from the footage of. From the footage of. We cannot live we, without. We cannot we live, live without, without our, our lives. lives. Our lives. Alice leaves shards of herself all over the house in an effort to stay seen. Delicate hairpins, some brown, some black, some borrowed, some broken, some bent on the kitchen counter. This means stick to the plan, Alice. A campfire pile of shoes in the semi-living room, some new, some old, some wet, some tall, some short. This means stay grounded, Alice. Earrings on the low table, all studs, some silver, some bronze, some gold. This means pay attention to the small things, Alice. Boxer briefs on the bathroom floor near the toilet. This means Alice's pussy is free today. Yes. Blood droplets on the floor. This means Alice is alive today. We, we cannot live our, 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 our lives. Our lives. Our lives. The Lord's 10 commandments four to six. Beware the urge to justify your decision. Your silence will not protect you. Yes, you do need to cry, but there's enough time for that. Mm. Alice hears this while chopping onions and eating her tears. Listen, they will try and take you. They will try and say that you are the reason for the ceremony. Tell them consent is sexy, this is no phase. And you don't have to give them any sliver of any bright anything. Period. And Alice puts the onions in the skillet and she wants to feel full, full, full. And over, 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 and new, new, new. Peeled and caramelized. Alice says, I don't wanna. About laundry, about proud boys and people who vertebrae with fire. She is, don't fucking touch me when it comes to there. Aw, there, don't cry. And don't kill that spider. But she tries to be observative, you know, and calm. Alice is not in like with the porn of broken clavicles. Broken families and broken promises laying around on social media's floor. Dream 876.A. Audrey Lord holds her breast in her left hand and gift wraps it in black lace with a note which reads, here lies, thank you. And Marie Laveau makes an egg omelet in the kitchen while Frida chops an onion and seasons a dictator's fleshy limbs. Me, in the dream I am yelling, as for me in my house, I will praise the Lord. And Audrey Lord laughs at this in a single chuckle and that chuckle breaks the mirror and 30 dozen bees honeycomb around the sweetness of my tobacco drenched heart. The Lord's 10 commandments seven to nine. Sister love, sister love, sister love. Work, love, rest. See, learn, and report. Don't be afraid to feel. And don't be afraid to write about it. Even if you are afraid, do it anyway. In a parallel universe where Alice walks into the department store as herself, Everyone says, good morning. Good morning. And two or three sales folks clamor to see if she needs anything. Good morning. Asks her, what's her size? And treats her like a human. You know, as if she matters. Brief Into yourself. Through your childhood. See the broken windows and cracks. 
in the street light. Suck on the decadence. Hold it. Blow a bubble. Uh, show your red tongue mm. to your highest. To your highest. And clap. And clap. And clap. And clap. Alice takes 47 pictures of her left breast. Nicknames her breast to how me and imagines being in that tribe. I took this selfie because I do not know what the outcome will be. Sweet left side sister, sweet plump enough for a hungry small mouth. I do not know what this home of a chest will heave. And so I capture you mid stage and every side is your good side and I will not filter your leaving. Alice, asked Siri, how can I fucking kill cancer? And cancer says to Siri, you know too much about me. Mm. And Siri says to Cancer, a person who has an excessive interest in or admiration of themselves. And Cancer spends three chemo sessions talking about how he's not about that life and how he's not a narcissist and how he does not think the world is all about him. And Siri says to Cancer, of a person, action, or motive, lacking consideration for others concerned chiefly with one's own personal profit or pleasure. Eulogy for Alice's Blackness. It was long lasting and persistent blackity. Even it didn't crack, but it did bleed. You wanted it, but couldn't have it. You say, Goodbye, but ask if you can have her. You slept with it, cotton white sheets, fabric of your life, lie. Oh, I'm wary. I'm wary. Need the taste of destruction. Like destruction. Like destruction. Spin, spin, spun. I watched what the elder and ancestor had to say, and I remembered the child in me. Spinning around as fast as she could in a chair which always held me. What happens when I am dizzy from making myself go round and round? What happens? When the chair is all of a sudden separating from its foundation. Mm. Mm. In what life is a black woman allowed to be her own spin and her own chair? Mm -hmm. In what life is she allowed to sit as long as she likes and still be moving? And still, still, be, still, still, moving still be moving without feeling, feeling like a moving target. Without being a moving target. The Lord's Ten Commandments, the last and most important. Baby, go out like a fucking meteor. Spin, 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 spin. Hello, everyone. We are back. Um, let's just give a moment in the chat to just give it up to the performers and Anastasia Renee. Let's just, I just want to see the chat move with some love. Y'all know that y'all can do that. Um, we are not about to just go forward without setting some tone of love and peace up in this space. All right. Okay. When I feel like it's enough, a hey, we will start. Okay. It's getting there. It's getting there. You know, I don't need y'all to sleep. Yes. Y'all can't like I say loud in person, but them fingers can type away. I need your fingers to type away because like for real, like that's it. And for those of you that don't understand a black woman's voice, it is okay. It is not for you to understand. 
it is okay. If you are watching this and you have no clue what you're watching, you are in the right space. Because there's a lot of times y'all do stuff and we have no clue what you're doing. But because of white supremacy, we have to move forward anyway and work our way around it. Mm-hmm. Now that that is said and that is done, we are going to move on to this wonderful conversation with Anastasia Renee. Um, first off, I love you. Oh, I love you too. Second off, I, we, everyone that is witnessing this is so proud of you. Um, third, you get to be the diva. You get to walk into that. You get to reign supreme. I know that's hard for you, fam, but you get to do that. Okay. So tonight I want you to (laughs) wear it, accept it, and know that we are here for you. Okay. To those that are watching in the chat, please comment, make chats. I ask if you have questions, if you have things to say, understand and know that some of your questions and comments can be violent. So before you put those in there, be mindful of what you are asking or what you are saying. We are about to jump into a chat with black femininity, black masculinity in all its forms. And so I want y'all to understand that this needs to be handled with love and care. Mm -hmm. All right. And if you don't know me, I'm Danny Terrell, and this is me all the time. I don't change for nobody. <laughs> they <In> per- know <laughs> now. <laughs> if they didn't know, they know now. So. They don't. You know, it, it is what it is. I'm the curator for Central District Forum for Arts and Ideas. I don't know why they hired me. They did. I'm here. I don't know why Anastasia and the Fry asked me to do this because they know me. Well, A knows me, but I'm here. How are you doing tonight, Anastasia? I am overwhelmed and grateful. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm overwhelmed and grateful. And I'm, I'm thoughtful. I'm, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm thoughtful. I think I've been in it so much that mm-hmm. I've, Today is like the first moment where I'm like, oh, step back. Oh yeah, the court, those, you're what, oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. You, never, you know what I mean, you know what I mean as an artist, yes. like, you do, it, you do it, you do it, you do it, and you're like, and now what, and now what? Perfection, perfection, strive for it, strive for it, and now what, and now what, you know? So I, I'm like, oh, oh, I'm having a delayed reaction. And I'm so grateful. My attitude, right. gratitude is life. And I'm also so angry. I'm angry. Um, I think I think you can be both angry and grateful. And that's right. where, where I'm at. I, so me and Anastasia were talking and I know people want to know about the exhibit and about the poetry. And there will be tons of talks and conversations that Anastasia will have around that. What I wanted to talk to, and then we'll bring in the performers, but we're going to sit for a minute. What I wanted to talk about today, which really kept striking me inside of, um, I got a sneak peek at the exhibit yesterday. Like I got to walk inside of it. And thank you, Michael B. May, for the video. But being there in person brings a whole nother level of, of, of um, love and intentionality to what you're witnessing. So um Hopefully the museums can open soon. And if they do, I suggest you all really go in there and take it in and then we'll add another layer on top of that. Um, The thing, I'm just gonna read what I text to you the other day. Um, As the battle of gentrification takes over black and brown neighborhoods, why are we not talking about, talking more about the gentrification of the black, of the body? And if we are, um, how do we? How do those conversations exist? So there's a few things happening. There was the gentrification of her body. I'm going to say with cancer, and we're talking about the character Alice. Um, the gentrification, of course, of her physical space, of her mind. Um, 
Can you just talk more about that? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I have to thank you, Michael B. Main, for, for capturing what you could on the video. You did a you did a lot a great job, more than yes. me to explain it. We needed that. I think I don't know if I can answer your question swiftly, but I, I think I wanted to talk about the parallels between the gentrification of neighborhoods and the gentrification of the black body, because again, I don't feel like mainstream talks about the gentrification of the black body very much. I know that black women, black people, feminists and womanists are talking about it, but I don't feel like the parallels are drawn and I don't feel like it's important. Um, I don't feel like black women's bodies are important. And I wanted to find a way to talk about both. It's very important to talk about gentrified neighborhoods, but what I'm learning is that more people are, are open to talk about that than they are about talking about um, medical racism and all the things that have been done to black women's bodies for the, for, the, for the sake of whatever, for the sake of, for the sake of, you know what I mean? No one is, is talking about uh, the fact that um, actually more white women get breast or get breast cancer, but more black women die from breast cancer. Like this whole medical racism thing still exists and we're seeing more of it with COVID. I think I just, need people to take a step back. Think about those things. When you're thinking about redlining, when you're thinking about appropriation, when you're thinking about an, an entity coming to take over a thing, I want you to think about that as it relates to the black body, the black woman's body and all that we hold. I don't even know if that answers your question, but that's, that, that's why I let Alice um, try her best, the character Alice, try her best to talk about both um it, it is yes it answers the question and it is the start of the question and the start of an answer um the when i think of cancer and we think of the physical aspects of what cancer does to your body um especially when we're talking about breast cancer and we're talking about women um and not to like give any spoilers but we talked about this a little bit alice dies and that was real like why can't she live and why can't she and you know and we know because of the the, the medical reasons and and the lack of of adequate medical care that this happens to many black women yeah there's also cancer that we don't talk about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in particular with black women um can you and I'm being very vague with my questions because I just want to like, I we're going to bring in the other artists. So I just kind of want to just open it up to your thoughts and ideas. So folks, I'm asking kind of vague and like open questions because I think it's important to hear from you all more. Um, yes, I'm going there. Wait a minute. Private chat was like, Danny, you going there. I forgot to tell y'all uh, artists that I will be going there quickly today. We are not going to waste no time. So go ahead, Anastasia. <laughs> Yeah, and also no, you know, trying not to give away. How can how do you not give away spoiler alerts when you know I want people to go to the exhibition? Maybe yes. video. You know, I'm like, how do I not spoiler alert something that maybe not might not be seen? So I need to tell all about it. Right. Uh, I, I I I think in the exhibit via Alice, I was also trying to talk about the the cancer of keep it moving. Um. Mm -hmm the metaphorical black woman's cancer of like, she's being, she's so strong. You know, the black woman is so strong. She can get through anything. She is a superhero without being given her accolades. She can, she can do everything. She can take care of everybody. She can lay down, she can stand up, she can do whatever and she will be okay. Right. Even us internally, we're so quick to say, but you're so strong. You know, you're so strong. And I want to talk about the kind of cancer that has us people, black people, black women walking around eating themselves up. Just so tired from the weight of it all. 
I wanted to talk about the cancer of stress. You know, after a while, for some women, we're all different. For some women, for some people, the, the cancer of stress takes such a toll on you, but yet you're expected to take care of a nation um, and, and uh, be calm and peaceful and um, facilitate DEI trainings and like um, look fabulous. I mean, you have to look fabulous while you're carrying the weight of the world. And then you, you have to raise kids and be a great uh, mentor and you also self-care. Yeah, 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 self-care. Okay, all of those things can cause stress, especially if the world is not um, supporting you. So via Alice, I wanted to talk about, you know, the cancer of keep it moving. You're, you're good, you got it. And how black women, we do that to ourselves too. We're so prideful. We're so afraid to ask for help because if you ask for help then that makes you look weak or people may not depend on you or, you know, they're gonna pick the next one. And so the, the, the idea of cancer is, yes, liter, literal. We're talking about straight away breast cancer and the parallels also with Audre Lorde and Alice, but I'm talking about yeah. the other cancers too. Yes, yes, thank you for that. Um, I, it was something that you said, um, you gotta look fly, you gotta facilitate, you gotta be all of these things. Um, and uh, another thing that I, that I, that struck me in that, and I think I brought this up to you. Uh, we just looked at the election, especially what happened to Georgia, and we put all this weight on Stacey Abrams, who is a phenomenal person. But what happens when we move on to the next magical Black woman? Mm -hmm. Like, that is cancerous itself also. We don't talk about that. We also, and, I, and let me preference we. We, as in people that are not other Black women or femmes, tend to lift up Black women just to smash them down. We just lost Cicely Tyson. And I've been a fan of hers her entire career, as long as I've been alive. But now everyone's memeing and putting in, you know, oh, she was so great. But we wait till she dies to lift her up. Yeah. You know, we wait till these women go through hell, black women, we wait for y'all to, we wait for you all to go through hell and then we don't take care of you. How can we change that dynamic? I think it starts too with all of us who are artists and writers talking about it. Um, I could have talked about a lot of other things in this exhibit. I wanted to talk about this. I think it's, I think we're a little afraid to talk about it, first right. of all. Um, because I, I think I've been that way too. You focus on one person and all of a sudden they're the magic black woman of the month. Yes, right. these five people are the magic black women of the month. Um, and for every one magic black woman of the month, there's 50,000 who are doing the same thing, just not getting noticed, right? Yes. So I think um, part of the exhibi uh, exhibition was, was, was trying to find voices in that. Alice, Alice is also a magical black woman. She just yes. has not to be well known or in the political arena or 25,000 degrees or a million, uh, a million dollars um, or knowing the right people, blah, blah, blah. But she's magical, too. And I think it's important for everybody to feel that sense of magic. But every black mm -hmm. woman has to be the magical black woman, um, not just one or two. And we know as part of racism, I call it oblivious, oblivious racism, um, is when other people, they mean well, they, they lift up, they lift up certain people, but while they're lifting up certain people, um, you could be one of those certain people and they won't even say hello to you in the elevator. Um, no. And so like, I, I feel like Alice, Alice is just saying, what about me? You, what, what about, you forgot to mention me. You're so busy looking at all the other people that are magical, what about me? And Alice dies. And then it's too late to give her her flowers, right? Because she kept it moving and she died. And this exhibition is saying, please don't do that. Give, give the black women, the black magical women their flowers while right. they're here you know, while they're here. And that's a, that's another reason why I think the choreo poem is so important because you're hearing parts of Alice, which is also parts of other black women's expressions and stories. Mm -hmm. 
Awesome. Um, I just want folks to know I'm like trying to pay attention to the chat. Anastasia notes like I'm. That's why I keep you know I'm just I'm trying to do my hosting duties and make sure I stay on top of it. Um, I we're going to uh, start bringing in some of the cast members. We're going to do those in two groups, and I just I just want folks to know and to understand. Anastasia was Renee was dope before the exhibit. They are dope during the exhibit. And they will be dope after the exhibit. So let's not spend six months just lifting them up and praising them because they do work again that you may not know that they do. And that is for all the black women that you come across. And it's, and I know other women are like, well, what about me? What about me? Yes, yes. Your people should be lifting you up. Like, Black women should not be lifting up other black women plus Asian women plus Latin women plus white women plus 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 and then black women are still at the bottom. That is my preaching. That's my sermon today. Can we bring in other cast members, please? <laughs> the Terrell sermon. <laughs> you know, I got to just <laughs> we just gotta go in. <laughs> Stormy, hey, Reagan, Randy. Hey. Um first. Uh, first in the chat, please give them some praise. I'm gonna say, give these three some praise in that mm. chat right now, folks. I'm looking at the chat, so mm. give them their give them their praise while they are alive. <laughs> Don't wait until they like mm. Reagan was so great. <laughs> Reagan is great right now, so Reagan can see it and read it. Randy mm. is great. Stormy is great. Okay, thank you, chat. That's thank all I just need y'all to do. Is praise them in the moment. Um, there's so many questions that I have. Um, I'm going to throw this first question out to all of you all. First off, beautiful mm. work. Um, mm. I just, y'all are just dope. That's mm. just it. That's just, that's it. Um, it's multi generational, it's from different points of view. Mm. Um, Stormy, you've been doing the thing for a real long time. Mm, true. Reagan, you are quiet, but don't play with you because you are a force. <laughs> you don't play with Reagan. Like, mm. Randy, you are a goddess in ways that people will never, mm. ever understand. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say that. What I want to ask you all <laughs> is, what did we get wrong in Alice's story? Damn, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So, um, hi, my accessibility need is I'm gonna be real nervous and I'm kidding. Um, what did we get wrong with Alice's story? Uh ooh, oh my goodness. Um, I think what we get wrong with Alice's story. Like you said, you know, she dies in the end. There is no real victory with her story except for that it's being told and she's being remembered. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, we failed. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's the reality of it. We're failing Black women. We're failing mm -hmm. Black trans women. We're failing disabled folks. We're mm -hmm. failing dark skinned women. We're failing, mm -hmm. we're failing everyone that's not, you know, pretty to us, you know, who's not doing all the shit, who's not. <coughs> not on the craze. Um, I think we get all of it wrong. We get black mm. women wrong mm. in general. Mm. I think we get it wrong if we think that it's just Alice's story. Mm. Mm. Because it's not, uh, you know, like all other people that have contributed to her death, to this cancer, you know, the cancer in her body and the cancer in her neighborhood and the cancer just in the way that it operates for her to have to keep it moving and have to keep it going. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like we get it wrong when we don't allow other people to take responsibility for the ways that they negatively impact us on the daily. Mm -hmm. This is not just Alice's story. And that's something that doing this choreo poem like came super clear. Like as we're reading the words, as we're going through it, I'm having this moment where I'm like, yeah, the Anastasia just come up with in my house. Like, really? Agreed. Well said. 
to do both. Stormy, you want to jump on that question? Well, I just want to say, I mean, it, it, it was said beautifully. I, I just, I can just uh, co-sign what what what, uh, what Randy and Reagan said because I agree with it. There, there are so many, and and I think that you calling out that you know that that magic Negro, uh, you know, trope that reappears again and again is really important because this is our time of transformation and we have to do things in a new way. So, thank you for that, Danny. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, beautiful answers from everyone. Thank you. Um, truthful answers. Uh, one of the questions I want to throw out there is that um, as cast members, there are quite a few queer cast members, and I ain't calling nobody out. You call yourself out. But I know most of y'all, so I'm just going to say it. Um, how do we support Black trans women, how do we support Black butches? How do we support Black non-binary people um, in the support of liberation? When we look at Alice's story, um, <laughs> just did a whole backstage dance for it. I'm sorry, y'all. The comments backstage are beautiful. So I'm just reading those as we go along also. Um, but how do we, again, we, we keep saying and again, the collective we is excluding at this point Black film, trans, butches, voices, film voices. Um, I'm mostly talking to cis Black men, trans Black men, white folks, Asian folks. How do we collectively support you all? Can we collectively support Black women and films? I'm acting like we as I'm taking myself out of the conversation. But how is the support there? How can we? Is it possible? Anybody, go. Anastasia, let's start with you. Yes, it's possible. Um, but obviously, it's slow and we don't see it all. And that's why we're doing the work. Um, I think that I think that most of us are at the intersection of intersectionality. And it's hard to cover all of those bases. It's hard to cover all those bases when you're talking about support. And I think for some of us, we're just like, I'm spent. I'm doing what I can do. You know what I'm saying? I can support 20 of these 50,000 things. And then some people are like, I'm able. I can support 48,000 of these 50 million things. You know what I mean? But I think the bigger question is, when we do give our support, how do we pass it on? I'm seeing a lot of people supporting. But I don't want to say um, support withholding, but I'm seeing a lot of a, a lot of people supporting and they do good at that. And that's like that's their their wheelhouse. And I think my question is, like, how do we decide after you've been supporting these five things for 10 years, maybe on your 11th year, you want to support one of those folks that you haven't been supporting? I think my thing is learning from new folks being willing to be to, to be open, to find out what other people are supporting. Sometimes people just don't know. You just don't know what what else is out there to support. Some of us live in, in places where you're like, all right, I know about these six things. I didn't even know those 10 other things were something to be supported. So I think part of it is putting the information out. Um, people who need support saying, you know what, this is what, this is what we need. This is what my organization needs. This is what these people need. I see you're doing that. Let me show you how we can cross pollinate. I really think communication and information is part of giving more support. I don't feel that sometimes we communicate enough. And I know sometimes that is uh, not our fault that we're not communicating because um, some of the world would love us not to communicate with each other. If we don't communicate with each other, we cannot build. So I think that doing more and more communication and information about what needs to be supported and who needs to be supported and why they need to be supported. Even though it might sound redundant, I think that's really important. Um, I just want to throw this in because somebody threw in something that was really beautiful um, and it was one of the cast members. Is it support or is it retribution? Um, and Stormy, Reagan, Randy, please jump on that. Ooh, that threw me for a loop. <laughs> but I, I was prepared to talk about just with what Anastasia just said. Um, 
oftentimes we do communicate and we are not heard. So I just want to be really clear, like when, when black women, when black queer people, when black films, like when we, like when we express what it is that we need, listen <laughs> and answer. Um, and don't make us jump through 8 million hoops to be supported and to find sustainability. Like it's, it's enough, like it is already enough, but, but yeah, Venmo, Cash App, like directly support people, you know, who need it. Um, but more than that, like, I think one of the things that has been a mainstay of black feminism is that we lift as we climb. Mm -hmm. um, and so as we're doing what we're doing, as we're like doing our work, we're always thinking of other ways to uplift other people. Um, and I think that that is an attitude that needs to translate to everybody else. Like, you know, get your, get your black feminist mentality um, and know that like it, it, it begins with centering the most marginalized among us mm -hmm. and making sure that they get what they need and mm -hmm. then we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. I had to ask him, did you mean retribution or reparations? We just gonna keep layering this in. Support, <laughs> retribution, okay. reparations. All of it. Yeah, right. they're they're connected. They're definitely connected. Yeah, I I think that um I think that the times are calling for us to learn from things that were done before, like the Combahee River Collective or um, you know, South to Soul Sisters in New York, uh, things that happened in DC and Philly and Chicago, uh, the Panthers, right? Those sort of mutual aid things, the um, American Indian movement that people have been doing for some time. And I think that because of how this country is right now, that's very important to do. That's very important to do, you know, along with the idea of absolutely redistributing funds. I was really thankful for 2020 because I had a big project and I was able to redistribute over $20,000, more close like to $30,000 back into community. And it's, you know, especially reaching out to elders, black queer elders. And so that was, you know, things like that can happen, but it's kind of like, like the process of decolonization because, you know, I'm black native. And so decolonization is a real important um, mode for me to travel through the world. So how do we decolonize our minds from growing up in this culture, you know, and, 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 and visualize and, and act to make a friend of mine passed away and she called it prefigurative politics, something like that. Like you live as if the culture has already changed. You live as if just with one another, right? that makes sense that was beautiful thank you thank you um thank you go ahead randy yeah um beautifully said i'm so honored to just be among these femmes and women just oh my goodness but um i always um i always say this just because i really think we as united states <laughs> Uh, somewhat citizens need to like really keep this in mind as we're kind of moving forward to this mutual aid. Like, yes, we distribute the wealth. Yes, all of those things. But right now we're all relying on the internet, like mm. to do 100% of all of this stuff that we are, you know, too scared to step out and do. Mm. So I think the biggest thing is like, step out there and put yourself in the line of fire for black mm. women. For black trans women can can we see some people mm -hmm. die for us instead of being mm -hmm. like oh i don't want to hurt get hurt too bad like i'm i'm over the performative allyship like unless mm -hmm. you're gonna get here and get hurt and get told no and get stomped to the ground for me and for mm -hmm. these people on this video i don't want to mm -hmm. get it mm -hmm. and that's on period so mm -hmm. like really like people need to like take that big step and like jump in front not be like oh so like really full force, like full, like 2021, we're not going back to 2020, you know, like. <laughs> Hello. So, yeah. Can't even, <laughs> right? Yes. Thank you for that. Um, I have two Beautiful. more questions for this group. Mm -hmm. And A, I don't want you to answer these questions yet. You're going to come back to these questions. Mm -hmm. But I'm just going to say, Randy, that cloak looks really great. Which auntie mm -hmm. gave that to you? <laughs> just saying. <laughs> 
blessed. I'm blessed to have amazing aunties in my life. Mm. I want to make sure your girl looks good. Nice. It's working, honey. <laughs> what? It's not, it's with a it. Woo. And then I happen to have this cute little sweater to go with it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so I'm feeling like an arts curator. Thank you. No. Oh. You know, we also have to have fun. Yes. As we talk about the hard stuff, we have to, and again, as A said in the beginning, we have to look good while doing it. Well. Okay. <laughs> good, though. Donate that coin so we can continue to look good. To look good. Nice. Yes. 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 Um, one of my last questions, um, and and this will probably be a difficult question to ask, to answer, but I just mm -hmm. want to put it out there. And it's probably not for you all, and maybe it is. Maybe mm -hmm. it's for our audience. When will your breath and your chest be able to rest? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Group two, y'all going to think about that question, too. So when y'all come in, that's going to be a question mm -hmm. also. I had to shift the wig. <laughs> When will your mm. when will your chest and breath be able to rest? Mm. Mm. You said I don't have to answer this, right? Is that what you said? Not yet. Okay, good. Okay. Um mm. and it may not be an answer. It right. Not. It's a hard question. We don't know. We hoping for soon. I, mm. I, I feel like I ask myself this every day, though. Mm. You know, when? When is yeah. that going to happen? When is it going to come? Um, right. And what keeps coming up for me is when I feel safe in my body. Mm -hmm. When I feel safe in my own damn home. When I can go to sleep at night knowing, you know, I'm not going to become the next hashtag or the next Brianna Taylor. Mm -hmm when I can walk into the street and bring all of who I am to my work, mm. to my love, to my friendships, to my community without, without the fear of retribution, without mm. just waiting for, for the other foot and for the other shoe to fall, you know, like, like this is really, it's really personal. Mm. It's really personal um, because to answer that question is to acknowledge that I do not feel mm -hmm. comfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we don't talk about. All of the things that Anastasia puts into her work are the words that we don't say in public. Mm -hmm. And so for me, like this is a start mm -hmm. is at least being able to acknowledge what it is that we're facing every fucking day. Mm. What's that? Reagan, that right there. <laughs> I'm so glad we have that recorded because that is that just hits. It just hit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to move into my last question for this group. Um my favorite question, if you know me, you know I love this question. What is your joy? Mm. <clears throat> Again, I want folks to remember that Black people deserve joy. We can joy. Yeah, we absolutely. are joy. Absolutely. And as much as y'all want us and y'all are, are, are diversifying us in our pain, you need to diversify us in our joy. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I, I find what? I, I find I, I find continual joy in my ancestors. I find continual joy in my ancestors and in, in thinking about them in 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 honoring them and having conversations with them in listening to those you know those those urges or impulses that you may not know where they come from, you know um, listening to them doing doing what they ask of you because, all the things and there's so many things but look what they survived and since we are here you know we are the people who survived the the, the worst you know our, our people they survived the worst of the worst <laughs> so you know by this point we we we've got some superpowers that they sent down to us so 
you know so that's my joy that's my joy Randy, go. I want Reagan away because. Yes, no, I was like, let's see. <laughs> Honestly. Mm. Um, oh, my goodness. My joy. Um, mm. My joy has been here, one. Mm. Um, honestly like and mm. everyone knows like this week has been a trash fire um, mm. but something that really just I don't know alleviates my spirit every time is when I'm surrounded by black femmes and I'm just mm. like you know what we're all going through some shit this week so let's get through the mm. shit together and yeah. so I really found so much peace and calm in this group and so like my joy is mm. right here mm. um and yeah. my niece is who I'm living everything and every fiber of my being for um, mm. to show them that anything is possible. Mm. Yes, Reagan. I love this question. <laughs> um, <laughs> first of all, I'm like, yes, joy. My joy is writing. My joy is young women empowered and hanging out with my kids. My joy is. Um, doing our podcast, me and they have a podcast, The Deep End. Mm -hmm. uh, but also lately I'm on 8 million like Zoom calls. And so I've taken mm -hmm. to sewing, uh, it's like a really nice fidget spinner. And I've been making these dolls and these dolls are oh, so are good. So cute. Yay. Your little doll fashion show here. Uh, <laughs> it's like, yeah, what? this one I made yesterday. Yeah, she's really cute. What? Yeah, and it's funny because my mom was teasing me about this because I never like really played with dolls as a kid. Um, but I love making these dolls. So these are my Our Joy dolls. Yes. That's so wonderful. I wanted yeah. Reagan to wait because I've been seeing her post them on Instagram. Oh, I love that. And I have a whole room full of dolls, and I'm just waiting for you to say these are for sale, or at least one's for sale, because I, I'm i serious. I, I have a whole room full of dolls. And so what? I was just patiently waiting. Oh, my God. Danny, I will make you a doll. Love it. Yes. I was about to be in your DM like, wait, can you pass over one of them dolls, please? I like, doll. Yeah, they it's going to go in the glass case. No. No, yes. oh. no these dolls are meant to be touched. Oh, schnooks. Hug this doll. It's not, no. They're made out of this soft fabric. It's like oh. super soft guard and corduroy. I, have the like, I hear you. I have a two-year-old living with me, and no, mm -hmm. that's mine. No. Right. <laughs> hey, I will make, um, we'll make multiple serious. dolls, so you can have a doll that's just in the glass case, and then a doll that is functional. Okay, right. thank you. I just yes, okay, there you um, go. yes, Stormy, Randy, Reagan, thank you. I know Fry thank Art you. Museum, you are on a time limit. Um, my blackness is not so. You know, bear with me. We are going to bring in group two. Thank you all so much for a beautiful Thank you. performance. Thank you all for showing up. Yes. We're going to bring in group two. How you feeling, Anastasia Renee? Good. I'm feeling good. I feel like I just want to leave everybody else. I don't need to say anything. That's it. You may have questions. I'm just, you know. I'm, you're doing what you do best. I'm just like, yes, do that. <laughs> yeah, so joining us, uh, also part of the cast, is Kamari Bright, Imani Sims, LeBrett Baker, and Jessica Reichel. Um, So y'all already know what the questions are not going to be like, really simple and cute. Um, so I hope you all are ready. But before we do that, of course, let me see the chat blow up for these four amazing people. Let's blow up that chat. Yes, everybody look fly and dope tonight. I still need the chat to like blow up. I need y'all to, you know, we have to act like we're actually in person. So your little typing fingers is your voices. So I need you to use your voices, your typing fingers to give them that. Uh, this work is not hard. Anastasia's, I mean, this work is hard. Anastasia's work will take you up, down, around. You don't know who you are. And let me just say this, all these people that you see on this screen are artists and all of their work, they do that. 
But Brett, you are the only person that I don't know, but I'm excited to get to know even more. So everybody's art. Uh, look, you y'all are look. There's some dope ass people on the screen tonight. I just want y'all to know that. Okay. Um, my first question to you all. Y'all ready? They're ready. They're ready. Black women are too much and not enough. What's the problem with that? Ooh. <laughs> the perception. Mm. Speak more on that, Jessica. Black women are the problem. It's everybody else and the expectations and entitlement to define what black women should be or how black women should show up or um, what black women should contribute. Everybody else gets to move through the world and decide how they want to be, who they want to be, where they want to go. But for whatever reason, um, when it comes to black women, people kind of treat us like puppets. Uh, like like we have no will of our own or we're not worthy or competent or, or don't have the capacity or the intellect to hold or wield our own wills for ourselves or any autonomy over our bodies, our decisions. It's, it's like everybody feels like they need to um, decide for us at any given turn. Everything that, that impacts us is decided by everybody except us. And I think that that is the problem. And we're done for tonight. <laughs> Jessica Rochelle, just shut it down, package it up, throw it away. Um, who else has to add to that? Thank you. That was, that was, yes, Jessica. Yes. I feel like everybody's just like, da -da 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 -da. yeah, da -da 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 -da. yeah, also, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next question. <laughs> Um, dang, I'm just like, um, whew, I'm like looking through all these questions, I'm like, where do we, oh, this, okay, here's one. Talk about the absurdity in your black body living in Seattle and in the United States. Oh, I gotta go get my fan. Y'all go ahead and start that conversation. I'll be right <laughs> Okay, wait, can I... I would love to open this conversation as a Seattle native, born and raised at the University of Washington, lived my whole life on 24th and Judkins in the Central District. Uh, part of the absurdity of living in Seattle and being Black is that our community was so tightly knit and woven in the Central District for so long. Like my whole family lived in the CD my whole life. And then as soon as we started gentrifying Seattle, we started moving other places, Renton, Federal Way, further south, further and further and further south, which basically like spread us across our space and not on our own accord. It just got too expensive to live there. And so I think being in a black body, being in a black femme body in Seattle is often <laughs> a spectacle. I currently don't live there, but when I come home, I step into the airport and I'm like, oh, I remember how much of a spectacle I am because there are seven of me living in Seattle right now and that's it. There's all seven of us, maybe 15 on a good day. And so it's it's difficult to see ourselves reflected. So we're thought of as spectacles, but even in that like very limited capacity, we still like came together and come together on a consistent basis to be like, yo, fam, I see you, I love you. I got text messages on my phone right now that are just literally, hey, I'm checking on you. Being black in Seattle, I love you. And that's, I think that's how we survive the absurdity of it all. Thank you, Imani. Anybody else want to jump on that? Kamari? Um, woo, the absurdity of being in America when you still hold memories that this is not home. When your ancestors remember that this is not your home. I don't know how you balance that. Like even, it was beautiful seeing um, the young sister do the poem for the inauguration, but it's like just hearing patriotic messages from black people. I don't know how to process it sometimes. 
um, I, I feel like it goes to that duality or just that constant spin. It's like Alice is spinning and spinning and spinning because that is, at least in that case, like I'm causing my own movement and I can justify why everything looks crazy. And if I stop spinning, how do I explain all this shit going around me? At least if I'm spinning myself, I can explain that. Mm -hmm. It's just that duality, I feel like. Thank you, Kamari. Thank you, Imani. LeBrett, do you want to chime in or Jessica? Um, I'll chime in. I think something that I learned young is that there's room for us all. So the absurdity of constantly being told there's not room for your blackness and not even told through the actions like going into the department store there's no room for your blackness and for me to say hello to you there's no room for your blackness and your sizes your gender identities your hunger your pain your joy um the way you rock your hair oh you got a shaved head well there's no room for bald heads you know it's like well there's no room for somebody with an afro it's just the absurdity of not only non-black people telling us there's no room for ourselves and our variations but also black people us telling each other that there's no room for ourselves. And so what Imani said, like that just small moment, and I'm not saying small to minimize it, but that importance of just like texting somebody or calling on somebody says there's, there's room for you. That's always was very absurd to me. Thank you, Libra. Jessica? Uh, I think one of the things that I found, um, I find absurd, especially right now, is the expectation that black women um, are care caretakers for the greater good, caretakers for society as a whole, caretakers for the movements that are supposed to support and protect black people, caretakers in the home, like basically caretakers for everybody except ourselves. Um, and that takes a toll, that takes a toll. Like being taught to be a productive, caretaking, supervisory model for everybody in every aspect and every room that you navigate in every circumstances, every organization and not, um, and that is selfish to find room to do that for yourself, to be demonized for, for doing that for yourself, to be called selfish for doing that for yourself. It is productive, it's patriotic for black women to caretake when it's for the greater good, but when it's for our own good, it is uh, cause for discussion or controversial. And I think um, that takes a toll on us mentally and it definitely takes a toll on us physically, even, even going back to the poem and the gentrification of the body and cancer. A cancer is an accumulation of stress too. It's an accumulation of expectation. It's an accu accumulation of responsibility without release or relief. Um, and I think the finger gets pointed at black women when it, com when it comes to our mortality rates to say, oh, you're not taking care of yourself. That's why the death rate for black women is so, is so high because y'all do this and y'all do that. And it's like, well, what are the options and what are the capacity, what are the room is there for us to do, do things differently? And at what point do we decide to do it differently anyway? It's absurd that that's a question. Thank you. Go ahead, Anastasia. What y'all said. Um, I echo all of that. I also think that, um, and some of us, like myself, even we we put ourselves in 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 the position. But I still find it absurd um, to teach a number of people how to do better and be better how to do right by us. Um, the, the weight of having to constantly teach people how to do the right thing while you're one of the people that you want them to do the right thing to um, feels necessary and also absurd. Like everybody who's teaching DEI workshops and who's giving all these speeches and um, it's so necessary. And to, for me, that's the absurd part. It's absurd that these workshops, this knowledge is so necessary and important, but it's absurd that the people who are being kicked on the ground, you know, it's like, while I'm on the ground with my ribs hurting, I got to hobble up with my hurt rib and say, here's how you shouldn't kick next time. I think that is absurd. Um, but it's necessary. Uh, and plus everything that everybody else said, but I had to, to, to speak about that last bit of absurdity. 
Thank you. Thank you all so much for that question. Um, another question that I had, um, we know that Alice died. We know they from know Cam, now. huh? <laughs> they know now. They know, they know now. now. I knew. Um, so now the rest of you know. Um, um, cancer, gentrification, police brutality, domestic violence, um, all the ways that Black women we know die and we mourn their deaths. But are Black women really living in this day and age? Mm, I would love to hear you all's answer to that. I apologize again. This is just what comes up <laughs> when you ask me to talk about your work, Anastasia, and you I have these powerful know. people. I'm so, <laughs> okay, go. Uh, I think um, with each generation, we live more. It's kind of like, I think Reagan said, we lift as we rise. As each of us gets to experience being ourselves without the boxes and the labels. We model that for somebody else and they see like, oh, I can come out as my full self. Danny showed up with this dope lip. I can show up with a dope lip too. And I can do even more. It's like every time, like we just model and we up level each other with each generation. I don't think that we all have it, but I think it's, it's incrementally moving. Mm. Who else? Somebody go. I feel like in a moment like this, uh, as a Black woman, I'm living. I mean, for Anastasia, writing, channeling, birthing, whatever the word is for Alice and all Alice's variations, and for us to be able to come in or be invited into this space in this moment, this is like a bliss and I'm living. So I feel like in various ways, Black women are living and just may look different, as, as we know, depending on the circumstances. Like I can live, say, when I go to work and second guess myself because somebody's wife's looking at me, thinking I'm a student and not a professor. So in that moment, my living becomes small, you know? But then here with y'all during the rehearsals and the performance, I'm very much alive. So I think it, it varies. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Money. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. They want us to wrap it up soon, but just please bear with us. Um, I don't want to cut off this conversation too soon, but go ahead, Anastasia. I was just going to say, Amani and Jessica, did you want to weigh in on that question? You go ahead. That was my you it. <laughs> um, I think my quick way in is just that uh, in order to thrive, I think that we define our thriving. Um, we are very good at creating our own communities in our own spaces. And that's how we survive. And that's how we're going to continue to survive. And I'm so appreciative for the Black women in my life who continue um to say Ashe and I love you over me. Um, I'm going to ask you all this question, not the breath question, but another question that um, a few months ago, I got to uh, interview Christy Brown and she said something that has just burned in my mind that I will take to my grave. She said the enslaved women were cooking food for the masters and their people. And at any given time, they could have killed them through the food, but they did not. And, and, and when she said that, I just was like, damn, that is real. Why? Y'all know where I'm about to go. Why have black women given folks so much grace? Why have y'all not killed these motherfuckers? Sorry, Fry, I'm talking the way I talk. Y'all donors and stuff, I apologize. But look, let's just have, this is not your typical Fry audience conversation. 
Why do you all think black women have not just killed us all? Um, I, I guess I'll start it. Um, so I guess I will say that some of us did. Um, some of us just wasn't with it. And when you, you're done, you're done. Um, and then for the other ones, I think we always carry our, our loved ones' well-beings with us. So it's like, I, how do I leave here if I know my people ain't good? Mm. Um, and it's just, that's a part of like, we, we birth everybody. Like spiritually, physically, like we give birth to people. And there's a connection there that you can't, we, we can't forsake. So I don't, it's a lot in it. I'll let y'all jump in. I think it's a good thing that at this point, the, the audience is not um, virtually telepathic because <laughs> everybody's mind is thinking a million and five things. <clears throat> That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> I can see the minds, the wheels turning. And and I will say, yes, these questions are heavy. And again, I did not want to have these powerful beings on screen. And then we go back to having surface conversations because I know how deep a lot of them think. Um, and I know that these conversations can be uncomfortable for them to have in public in person. But I wanted to make sure that we hold this space because we cannot look at this work we can no longer look at their work and just pass it by as we're doing a good thing. We have to listen in a different way and in a, with a different ear, with a different intention. We cannot continue to expect black women and thems and trans women and butchers and, and all the, the things that we are to save us. If we are not willing to do what Randy said first, step in front of them and take the bullet for them. So that is why I wanted to have this particular conversation. Um, if anybody else wants to weigh in, I know we have to wrap up. Mm, I don't know that I can answer uh, in a general sense for black people or black families in a general sense, but I can offer two perspectives um, potentially. I think one perspective is that um, Black people don't have the privilege of acting in silo. And I think we see that with our Black Lives Matter movement is the clearest right now. You have a group of people who um, are pushing back on a system after it violated us. And then you see protesters, leaders of these movements disappear one at a time. It's not a, we don't get to act and it just, it just be in response to a thing or they respond to us, they respond to all of us. And I think sometimes that sacrifice feels too great um, as on for for one individual to to bear, I think that's one perspective. I think another perspective is that you have you have people who drink the Kool Aid. Unfortunately, I think you have black people who feel like um, learning the language means you get to sit at the table, and I and we all know that that's not true in in reality. But I also think that 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 keeps a lot of people from from pulling the trigger metaphorically. I think they think if I spare them this time, then they'll give me something later. But in order for that logic to work, they have to see you as an equal and they don't. <laughs> so I, I think it's flawed logic, but I do think it's a perspective that, that we still see play out, even with this last this last administration and election and all of these, these public figures that the general public might've had faith in, but then um, kind of showed their cards to be, to be in a different hand. Um, to put it politely. <laughs> so I think I think you have to consider multiple sides of it. I think it's not as straightforward as um, pulling the trigger when you know that your son is also in the house as a mother. Sure, you can pull the trigger, but what happens to him? How do they retaliate? Um, and also you can't really, once once you, you get to the point where you feel like white supremacy and colonization benefits you and your black body, I think it, it's pretty difficult to talk about logic <laughs> or reparation. That is so real. Um, we look, uh, okay, I could go on. We have to wrap up. I know, I know, I know. Um, I, I'm going to ask you all this question because I have to, we have to end on joy. What is y'all's joy? And A, just stay on with me for a second. Again, don't answer that question. A, everyone else, what is your joy? 
I'm gonna say black laughter for me right now. I love black people doing anything that's funny, hilarious, anything that makes no sense, has no rhyme or reason, just just fun loving. I think I think we deserve lightheartedness and joy um, right now more than, than any other time in our lifetime specifically. So I get off on anything that, that involves giggling and blackness. Thank you. Let's go to Labrette. I'm just gonna call y'all out because y'all pondering, y'all thinking. <laughs> Um, so my joy is being silly. My parents are silly. My grandparents are silly. And honestly, tonight is being here with y'all, meeting you, Danny, being here with everyone here. This gives me so much um, deep-seated joy. It feels like any abnormalities that are were physically going to be embodied, they just soften and they just dissipate. And so this is so healing and restorative. So thank you. Thank you so much. Miss Amana Sims, let's go with that hat. Oh, Lord. Okay. Uh, <laughs> my joy these days has really been in silence. It's Aquarius season. And I have been taking a lot of time to just like be in my own Aquarius life in my silence by myself. It's my favorite thing. So just that quiet, that solitude, the opportunity to commune with my ancestors has been such a joy. Thank you, Kamari. All right, and my joy has just been being true to myself. Mm -hmm. out. That's it. Thank you. Hey, stay on screen with me for a second. Kamari, Imani, Labrette. Thank you. Jessica, thank you so much for your truth, your honesty, your love. Uh, Reagan, Stormy, and Randy, again, love to y'all so much. Thank you all. Um, Anastasia, when will you be able to breathe? What is your joy? Wait, you I have to answer both at the same time? Yeah. That makes me not okay. <laughs> When will I be able to breathe? I can breathe, I'm breathing, but I think the real question is when will I be able to take a deep breath mm. and a, a true deep inhale and exhale? And my honest answer is, I don't know. I don't know, but I've been told by my ancestors and my elders and the people that love me that I really need to work on it because I wanna be here and do more of this kind of work. Um, and if that's true, then I have to really look at what Alice, what happened to Alice. Uh, and I really need to, to check myself and to really incorporate more self-care and self-love so that I can continue this bright light. So the answer to the breathing question is that I am wholeheartedly working on what it means to deep breathe. My joy Oh man, I had this conversation. Nobody can take my joy. I already have joy. You can't take, you can't give it to me or take it away. It's already there. It's mine. What I need to work on is my happiness um, and my sanity and staying grounded. And so those are the things that I'm working on. But my joy, I claimed that a long time ago. You don't get to have it. No one gets to interfere with it. So I'm working on my happy. And I'm working on my grounded, being grounded, and I'm working on delight. Delight is for 2021. I'm working on my delight. Yes. Again, thank you, Anastasia, Renee. Uh, please, you all, do what you can to stay in the loop of Don't Be Absurd, Allison Parks, currently at the Fry Art Museum. Um, and do what you can to connect with these artists. What I mean connect is give them money. Let me just be real. That's what I mean. Like, give them money so they can continue to do the thing that they're doing. Uh, I am Danny Terrell. I'm the curator for Central District Forum for Arts and Ideas. That is our conversation. We're going to shoot it over to Amanda. Thank you all so much for having me. Uh, Fry, I hope you have me again because you know I'm not your typical museum girl. Okay, turn it over to me, to Amanda. Thank you. Wow, what a powerful performance and a great conversation. Thank you all so much. Before we wrap the program up, I would just like to reiterate our thanks to CD Forum 
programming curator Danny Tyrell and all the Choreo Poem performers for your partnership and collaboration in tonight's wonderful program. I'd especially like to thank Anastasia Renee for creating such a moving and necessary exhibition. I can't wait to spend more time with it myself and um, read all the poems included therein uh, and to share it with others. In the meantime, please visit our website to learn about and register for upcoming virtual programs in connection with the exhibition, including The Characters of Nine Ounces, a one-person show, a conversation with Anastasia Renee on February 11th, uh, a poetry and activism workshop with Anastasia Renee for educators on March 10th, and Don't Be Absurd, Allison Parts, an artist talk with Anastasia and Alicia B. Johnson of Wanawari on March 25th. We're also planning two poetry readings featuring some of Anastasia's favorite poets um, and details on those will be forthcoming. Uh, also, we have Anastasia's books and publications by several of the Choreo Poem performers available in our store and you can find those through our website as well. Finally, to our viewers from all of us at the Fry, thank you for joining us this evening. We wish you the best and look forward to welcoming you back um, into the museum as soon as possible. And we just learned that it will be soon indeed. We're re-entering re phase two, so we'll be um, offering free time ticketing starting Thursday, February 11th. So good night for now and see you soon.